Welcome to beautiful Recife, Brazil, as we get set for match day one, game one of the America Cup here in 2022. Fans on hand here in Recife, Brazil, will be treated to a South American clash between Uruguay and Colombia. Carlin Gay alongside Javon Shepard. Thanks for joining us wherever you are, however you're doing so. Group A action in effect here today. See game number one, Uruguay, Colombia. Later on tonight, the host Brazil. This arena will be packed when they take on Canada. Definitely two matchups to circle. Join us in conversation on social media with the hashtag America, wherever you're watching in the world. You see the energy, Javon. You've played for your country internationally. What's it like when you walk into an arena that's like this? This is, it's electrifying, right? You look around and, you know, both teams playing right now, not the host team, but the fans that, you know, the, 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 the kids that are here, the energy, that's like the, a sixth man, an invisible sixth man on the court, right? So whether it's good energy, whether it's bad energy, you feed off of that as a competitor. And I think the big thing for, you know, all these opening games is that you're not familiar with other teams' rosters, right? There's younger, there's some teams of some younger rosters, some older guys, but you're, you're coming out here to learn um, the teams, and you've got to just focus on yourself right now and your own identity. Uruguay getting introduced to the crowd. It feels like a boxing match, the way they come out the tunnel. And the crowd definitely has kept the energy alive. They've been going like this for at least an hour. And <laughs> Excited, right? Like this is this is live basketball, and you think about it. There's been a hiatus, right? You think about what COVID has done, and haven't had to have you know live action, live fans for so long, and just to have you know international competition. Players are excited, coaches are excited, fans are excited. We're excited to be back here, right? So there's a lot to be you know energized about, and, and using that energy if your players to manufacture you know some some production on the court. Coach, uh, coaching staff for Uruguay as Colombia gets introduced to the crowd for the first time here at the America. As you said, these rosters kind of uh, a little bit of a melange, a little bit of a gumbo pot, really. A mix of young, old, talented players from all over the world representing each country here at the America. And for the first game, both teams will run out of the tunnel. And you, you think about it, especially for some of those young guys, this is this is an opportunity, right? Some of these young guys are tomorrow stars, right? Um, they come out here and just get to get a taste of, you know, the first opportunities playing for the national team to wear that jersey. You think about it, you only get to represent your country in war and in sport. I'll take sport, right? I'll definitely take sport. but. I remember the first time I put on that jersey, it meant so much. I can only imagine for these guys. You and me both, my friend, will pause now for the scene of these two nations' national anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Colombia, Hino Nacional de Colombia. The national anthem of Uruguay, Hino Nacional do Uruguay.
troca de presentinho dos atletas. Vamos nessa. All right, guys. All right, the two teams will exchange gifts as is customary in international play. Who's the best gift you got from a uh, opposing team? Oh. You know what? I, I saved all the pins, right? I still have. And they meant more to me after I played than they did at the time. Because at the time, you're coming in and you want to bite the heads off of your opponent. So it's like, okay, let me, let me get this gift and let's get to work. But no, just looking back at them now, just all the pins, and it's a, just a reminder that one, you are you know, one of the top players, not only for your country, but across the globe, right? And, and just looking back to the places you've been, to the players that you played against, and now seeing a lot of them that are coaching or some guys that are still playing. I know we see Virgin Islands later, a former teammate of mine, um, Ivan Aska, and you know, seeing Thiago Splitter, a part of, Brazil's coaching staff and so forth, younger U23 team and guys you played against and played with. So it, it's just, it's good to see. No question about it. All right, let's get set for tip and introduce you to these two teams. First, we'll take a look at Colombia's roster and starting five. Here's the starting five for Colombia. Roas Tello, Roque, Atencia, and Echenique. Jaime Echenique. Likely get our spotlight player of the night. Had a fantastic season in the G League club. He did, you know, almost average himself a double-double, 16, excuse me, just under 16 points on 10 rebounds this year. And, and has a good, he just uses angles well, uses his body well. Um, and just to see him continue to develop, it's, just, it's interesting to see how he's going to go from, you know, playing in the G League and the, the NBA style of brand of basketball to now impacting in a FIBA um, format. Very physical play. We'll talk about that throughout the evening as we take a look at Uruguay. Missing two of their top players. Jason Granger not here. And they do have young talent, and here's the starting five. Iglesias, Rodriguez, Bautista, Parodi, and Roas. Bowl is a name that we'll talk about throughout this evening and the youngsters on this squad. And just seeing Batista still out there and still kicking it, doing it at, at his age, guy that I played against, and just the fact that he's still having that impact, really taking care of his body. And again, now the ability to come out here and contribute and, and share his knowledge and his experiences with the young guys that's what this is about, right? The constant development, giving back to, to your country. You mentioned Batista. We gotta wish him a happy birthday. It is his birthday today, He's turning 39, closing in on the big 4-0 and still out there and getting the start for Uruguay and coach Ruban Magnano, the Argentinian coach. A minute to go before tip. You play in tournaments like this. What's important to establish right out the gate? Defensively, right? And it, it sounds cliche um, that defense wins championships, but at the same time, you come out there and you set the tone because, especially if you're the first two teams playing, everybody else is watching, right? Nobody has a scout, a scouting report set, and Everybody's coming out here and just playing their game. You gotta set your set the tone defensively, come out, be the aggressor, be the intimidator, so that teams know that you know you're not the one to be played with as they're doing their scouts, as they're trying to identify, you know, what you do on the offensive side and so forth. Well Uruguay coming in here with a 40th FIBA world rank. This tournament important for points that could help you improve that world rank. Colombia ranked 66 in the world. As we see each team, one last dap before they walk onto the floor. There's the aforementioned birthday boy, number 15, Esteban Batista, the captain of Uruguay. And Echenique on the other side, Jaime Echenique. That's going to be a battle between two mammoths down low. Colombia in the road blue. Uruguay, the home baby. And it's funny, you mentioned the, 
You mentioned the rankings, right? And it's, it's, the reality is, in these tournaments, ranking don't, rankings don't matter as much because it depends on who shows up. Like you mentioned, Uruguay missing you know, two of their best players. How is that going to impact them here today? Well, they stand and rise here in Recife, Brazil, as we get set to start game one of the FIBA Americas. America 2022 here in Recife, Brazil. The birthday boy had to tie his laces. And off we go from Recife, Brazil. Colombia taking on Uruguay. Carlin Gale alongside Javon Shepard. Thanks for joining us wherever you are, however you're doing so. Colombia in the dark road uniform. Uruguay in the baby blue. Batista got his first rebound and first touch. Gives it off to Parodi. Iglesias. This is Batista. He's pushed in the back by Echenique. And that's a first early quick foul on Echenique. And on both sides, you're getting two post touch early to establish position. And Batista there, you can just see, trying to set himself down low. And Echenique giving up a little size there, just gave him a little nudge. 16 on the clock for Uruguay to work with. Rodriguez uses the Bautista screen. Good defense there by Roque. Five to shoot on the clock. And Rojas knocks down the first triple of the tournament. Atencio, Roque, Roque, good hesitation. Down the lane! Finishes right at the cup. Roque there just attacking, the, just like you mentioned, that slight hesitation. Gets the defense up and using his speed to attack and get to the rim for a finish. Rodriguez, they're looking for Batista. Batista wanted it, didn't get it. Iglesias, that's an easy two. And that's just a good read, right? Like you mentioned, everybody's focusing on, focusing on Batista. That lane opens up. You see it. One hard attack, get to the rim, get yourself an easy finish. Tensia comes off the Tello screen. Tensia now pulls it back out, gives it inside. Parodi comes away with the pickpocket. Tried to go between the legs of Atencia. Look away pass! And the finish inside by Tello. Nice look away, dump off Tello. Good hands, great finish, good touch. 5 4 your score. Uruguay in front. Iglesias, what a feed, Batista! But they'll wave the bucket off as an offensive foul is called on Rodriguez. And that one hurts, right? Rodriguez, you know, you know, you pick up the charge, but you made a beautiful play behind, over your neck. You want that finish, because you want to be on that top 10 tonight. Top 10 goes out on every match day. You can find it on social media and join us in conversation using the hashtag on your screen, hashtag America. Atencia, Kalo. Echenique wants it. That's a little bit out of his range. Roas comes away with the turnover. Rodriguez wants some space for Batista to go to work. He faces up. Now he'll pound. Batista using his size. Turns inside. Can't get it to go. Got his own miss. Three defenders around him, and he finally loses possession. And Atencia picks it up for Colombia. Halo with a jab step. Double comes. Not effective. Atencia thought about it. Realized there's plenty of time on the shot clock. And they want to go inside now to Taylor. Good strip there by Parodi. Rodriguez. Feels like both teams are just kind of feeling each other out. Even themselves, to be honest with you. Parodi using the Batista screen. Rodriguez had a notion. Parodi now pulls for two, left it short, and Echenique vacuums it in. And, and both teams have had a couple live ball turn, turnovers right now, right? And I, I think from the offensive side, you just got to settle down and run your uh, trust your offense a bit more. You can see that team, both teams have jitters and just turning it over. Atencia with 10 to shoot on the clock for Colombia. Atencia dribbling, five to shoot, rock away three, that's short. The leg's not underneath that jumper. Seen a couple air balls here to start the game. And Roas comes away with a, another turnover. Sloppy play to start this one so far. Taylor for three. Indeed. 
just simple play there. Rojas there penetrating, getting into the paint. The defense collapses and kicks it out to Tello. Tello shot ready, gets it up a nice shot. And that's simple offense. Five quick points now for Tello, the captain of this Columbia squad. Parodi, he'll look to answer with a three of his own and does. Defense goes under, that's a perfect opportunity. Good read, getting up into your shot. Uruguay back in front now. 8-7 early on here in the first quarter, game one. A four on match day one here in Brazil. Roque looking for help. Got bailed out as the ball got poked out of his hands. And Chenique had that squirt right through his hands, and Uruguay looking to run. Rodriguez drives baseline. Kicks it back out, but Tista's not even going to look at the rim here. Rodriguez looks at it, takes it, and nails it. First three of the night now for Rodriguez. 11-7 year score. 5-12 to play here in the first period. And Chenique's first touch on the block. Faces up on Batista. Drives the lane. Batista got a hand on it. And Chenique follows up, and he was fouled, and he'll go to the line for two. And, and that's what he's going to have to do, right? Attack Batista. He has the quickness here. And, and guess what? Dip your shoulder into him. Create that contact in a little space so that you're, you have some easier finishes. That's the adjustment for Chenique, right? Going from the, the NBA game, you see it here. Good job recovering and getting the basketball. Going from the NBA game, NBA style. May have gotten away with that call earlier. Got to continue to play through the contact. FIBA basketball is a bit more physical. Have to adapt to that. So Jaime Chinique toes the line, 25 years old. Was born in Colombia. Then attended Trinity Valley Community College in Texas before moving on to Wichita State, playing for Greg Marshall. Went undrafted in 2020 and then started his pro career in the ACB in Spain. And now, as we've been talking about, getting an opportunity with the Washington Wizards franchise and the Capital City Gogo this past season in the G League. Roas kisses it off the glass for two. Great job again by Uruguay, just using the pass to break that press right down the center, getting to a layup. There's dueling Roas. There's one for Uruguay and one for Colombia as Atencia with a low dribble. Drives in, somehow got the shot up and over Rodriguez to fall. He didn't even look at the basket on that one, just threw it over his shoulder. Nice touch, got the ball high enough to give it a chance, dropped it in. The first look at Augustin Ubal, number eight in baby blue for Uruguay. Batista, he's been doing that a long time. And he, he just clears out so much space there. Attacks right on the spin there, gets the, gets the defense on his back. Atencia catching Uruguay's defense. Sleep there, and the pace is now starting to pick up here in quarter number one. Batista travel, and he, he's looking, he's looking for a foul there. But that ball, you know, you gotta put it on the floor before you take that step. Timeout on the floor as we take a look at some of the highlights. Jamal, nice kick out there again. Rhythm shot. You can see when you're getting guys at this level, those kind of shots, they're going to knock it down. 15-13, your score, Uruguay in front with 3.56 remaining here in the first period. Let's listen in to the Colombian huddle.
there's that no-look pass from Atencio. And again, Tello, he's just been in position tonight, today rather, just knowing where the passes are coming, understanding lanes, spacing, you know, getting himself early shots, just playing the game really simple and allowing it to come to him. Out of the timeout, it's 15 13 in favor of Uruguay. Game number one on match day one. Columbia basketball. Out of the timeout, Roque back on the floor for Colombia, number seven in blue, dark blue. He's on the rock. Taylor wanted someone to cut. Roas finally does after getting screamed at. There's the rocket. Rejects the screen, now penetrates, spins in the lane. Left hand can't get it to go. And Iglesias vacuums it in. Rodriguez. Batista on the roll. And Rodriguez does a good job there, just attracting all of the defense, getting into the paint there at that last second, dropping it off, just understanding where Batista is. Good job by Batista finding the basketball. Batista now with four points, two rebounds here in the first. Atencio, Halo, Roque for three. In and out. One-handed rebound by Ross. Rodriguez now running the point with Parodi on the bench. Batista has space to work with as they clear that side. Echenique with one foul has to be careful. Rodriguez, high dribble. Defense there by Echenique. Rodriguez finds Batista. Batista found himself too far underneath the rim. Couldn't take the shot. The ball's three goes off and out of bounds. And they say last touch by Uruguay. We'll go the other way. Batista, you know, he creates. You can see the display here. Getting into the lane. You can just see forcing Echenique to step up. And just dropping it down. There's no help on that backside. Too quick. Great sight. Great vision. Birthday boy turning 39 years old to see the shooting percentages for both sides. And the birthday boy, he he's done such a great job of just catching the ball where he wants it, right? As big as he is, he's still giving himself some space to work when he catches it in the post. And he demands so much attention, the further out he catches it, that weak side has to come further over, right? As soon as he makes his move to the basket, he's able to, you know, get layups around the rim, but at the same time has the patience and has the vision to pick apart the defense and make passes as well. Batista still complaining to our American official, Jenna Jordan Reno, to no avail as Colombia will inbound here. 20 in the shot clock, it's a Chenique. Atencia, Filo. And on the shot clock, Taylor crossing over. Floater is there. And Taylor, you know, we've seen the jump shot earlier. We've seen the cut to the basket. And now he's showing you a bit of his ball handling skill. Between the legs, cross, getting into the paint. Nice finish. Glacius passed it to a Batista who was not looking for the basketball. Batista's doing a lot of jawing out there. Parodi back onto the floor. No look pass to the corner. Glacius back out. Good ball movement for Uruguay. Ubal for three. Indeed. That's just that's just great ball movement, great execution, and unselfishness, mo unselfishness, moving the ball around the horn, giving up a good shot, and getting a great shot. First three of the game for Ubal. Youngest player on this team. Plenty of upside for the youngster who's just 19 years old. That shot goes awry. And Atencia, not impressed. And, and right now, both teams just, just trading baskets, right? At some point, you know, like we mentioned at, at the top of the, the game, is that you got to string together stops, you know, with your offense. You got to couple it together to give yourself a chance. Parodi for three, indeed. Back-to-back -back triples now for Uruguay, and they extend the lead now. Parodi just faking up to come off that screen, pop back, seeing that the defense was low, popped up into a shot. Great read, simple play, good rhythm shot. Montano. Roque, Echenique gets it on the block, and he's fouled by Bautista. 
And Echenique, you can see that he's having a little trouble with the strength and size of Bautista, right? Getting to his spots in the post, but not able to make the moves like he's accustomed to. You see it here, getting it, turn, and just that slide arm. Bautista picks up the foul. At the same time, if you're Echenique, you got to use your speed and make that quick spin. Like we mentioned here, great. Just read, popping behind the defense into a three. Washman comes into the game, number 33 in baby blue for birthday boy Batista. A foul on the Roque drive. That will send him to the line for two shots. Roas and Paroli discussing the miscommunication that allowed Roque to attack the rim. Roque will toe the line for the first time this afternoon. This is his first free throw. 23 years of age. Roque playing for Bebe Senior in the Swiss top league. Averaged 18 points, Javon, but only played seven games. Spark. That's what we call a spark plug right there. <laughs> no question. <laughs> it was pretty efficient from three point range, 35% this past season. Roque. We haven't seen him tee anything up yet so far. And Colombia falling asleep off the inbound and paid the price as Ceres plays it in. Uruguay has done a good job twice. Ur twice Colombia has gone to that press and Uruguay has done a good job of just breaking it and getting himself easy baskets. Good look there by Echenique finding Montano for a layup. Great bat door cut. About a four second difference between shot and game. Ibal. Washman. Barodi has two threes. Through the legs of Vecinique and Montano comes over with the block. Roque in the open floor. It's Atencia. He's going to have to put it up. He does. Can't get it to go, and that's how it will end the first quarter. Well, business started to pick up towards the back end of that period. But Uruguay in control at the moment. After the first quarter in the first game here at the America Cup here in Brazil. 25-18, your score, Uruguay in front. You see the shooting numbers for both teams. Uruguay with five three-pointers so far. That has been the difference, shooting 83% three-point range. Best plays from the first period. Here they are. That Echenique foul early, Javon, had the opportunity to be disastrous for Colombia. He escapes the first quarter with just the one foul. Batista picked up a foul on Echenique as well. We thought it was going to be a battle between the two big men. Right now, Batista winning it. Batista, you can, you can just see he's out there. He's using the experience, right? Using his size. He understands how to play. He knows his expecta the expectations from him on the, from this team. And, and you know, going into this game, that Echenique has got to be the one that, that Uruguay is going to have to stop, right, and be physical with. And Batista's come on. He's done that. Not only has he contributed on the offensive side, but he knows that's the matchup that's going to allow this, this Colombian team to get going, and he's taking advantage of that. And that, that's the experience that we're talking about, right? The, you know, birthday boy, but talk about the mileage that's on him, right? And that mileage comes with a lot of experience, and you're seeing him come out here and contribute big today. A reminder, courtside 1891 is the only app you need for all national basketball coverage around the world. We have the America Cup here in Brazil. We have Eurobasket happening in Europe. In a couple of weeks, we will have the FIBA Women's World Cup. Download it, stream, schedule, and scores, and more. Courtside, 1891. And in Uruguay, you talk about how they ended that first quarter. Seven assists on 10 made field goals, right? So. That was the key for them, is just moving the basketball and getting open shots, getting rhythm shots for a number of their guys. 
Parodi, that floater went awry. Looks to battle with Taylor when Taylor sent Parodi to the floor. Roque driving inside, foul before the shot. And Ceres putting his hands up. And that was just a big boy play by Tello down there. Got the rebound, just said, look, I'm bigger, I'm stronger than you. Got him off and then just start to push the break. His skill as well, right? Seeing a lot of skill from the near seven footer. I haven't really seen him play back to the basket yet. Here's an opportunity for him. Shows the up fake. Now in the office. The foul before the shot. Won't count. And was on the floor. Quick. Two quick fouls on Ceres. The, the strength there as well, right? Got the post up, the ability hand tied behind it with the defender, and still was able to get that shot off, right? Concentration, the poise, and obviously just the physical ability there using his strength. We're going to get a sub here. It looks like Ceres will sit. For the first time in the tournament now, we see Uruguay now going small. Washman the only big on the floor. Let's see if Colombia takes advantage of it. Taylor being guarded by Roas. Taylor pushes off, no call, missed the midi. And Ubal picks it up. Ubal in the open floor, driving to the rim. Can't get it to go. And Roque pushes the other way. Roque, Euro step, overshot the rim. And Washman. Picks it up. Bow's not going to wait for help. Now decides to peel off and slow things down. Washman screen for Ubao. Feels like he has a mismatch, he'll dance. Ubao got fouled. And you like how he attacks there, right? Comes off the ball screen, gets the matchup that he wants. Gives the ball up to get it back just so he can get ahead of steam here. Here's him attacking, gets the defender dancing a bit and draws the foul. But a good job, again, just recognizing the mismatch that you want in front of you, giving it up, getting your feet set, giving yourself some, some real estate to get momentum and get forward. Ibarraquin picking up his first. He's foul now. Can't hit the midi. First touch of the rock there by Mendoza, number 14 in dark blue. There's Roque. Ibarraguen. Mendoza. Ibarraguen shows the pump fake, jab step. Couldn't get the shot to go, but guess what? Tello's there on the cleanup. And, and is that really a surprise? It's every, all day you've seen Tello just find himself in scoring positions, and the ball just seems to find him, right? That's an active and engaged score. Nine points and counting for Tello. Three for Parodi, no good. Roas comes down with the offensive board. Shot clock resets back to 14. Ubal looking to dance again. Ubal right to the rim. Being so aggressive. I like him, right? Gives up a little size. You look at his slender frame there, but at the same time, he's constantly in attack mode. He's constantly putting pressure on the defense, catching the defender again, getting his left to right crossover and then slight hesitation, attacking the rim. And, and not afraid of contact there. You see it on the replay, just dips his shoulder, lets the defense ride him, and still trying to finish through the contact, getting himself to the free throw line. Coach Magmano has to be impressed with the effort that that young man has given them. 19 years of age, 6'6", 195 pounds. Started with Barcelona in the ACB. When you start there, you know you have <laughs> talent. Yeah, but it, you start in the ACB, you got some juice. You got something to you. Played for Rio Briano this past season. His teammates with Canadian Trey Bell Haynes, who we'll see a little later on playing host Brazil. But you, you look at his body language, right? He just is out there. You can tell he's confident, not worried about age. He plays like he's supposed to be here and fits right in. Young, That's a, that's a young budding star right there. Peg to go in the draft NBA class of 2024, right now with a second round grade. I'm sure that's going to rise as time goes on, because you can definitely see the talent and the fearlessness that this young man has. And you look at his size too, right? Like look at his arms, the length of his arms is has some reach there. So, you know, the effort that he has to make is far less than guys that are, you know, a little 
smaller in, in, for position. Taylor was feeling himself a little bit on that jump shot. Couldn't get it to go. That's a heat check. He deserves it. He deserves it. Twenty-six twenty. Early on here in the second quarter. First game for these two teams here, the FIBA Mera Cup in Recife, Brazil. Roque poked it out of the hands of Parodi. Goes out of bounds and will allow some subs to come into the game for Colombia. Rocha and Atencia back into the game now for Colombia. First it'll, time we see Procha, number two, in dark blue. It'll be interesting to see how long Batista sits for Uruguay. Right, right now, nice little lead. And again, youngster, right? Get into the lane and gives you that little Chris Paul fake. Gets the defense off and just confidently finishes at the rim. I, I like him, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Intensity is shot no good. Procha on the offensive glass. Now he wants it on the block. Turns and fires. Can't get it to go. He bow, vacuums it in, and he'll push. Tanya all over him. There's a little bit of physicality for the youngster. Parodi for three. High arcing shot, can't go. Look at Roas crashing the boards. Does not come up with possession, but Coach will love that effort. And those are the plays there. You. That's how you earn minutes at this level, is doing the little things, giving your, you know, giving your team opportunities at, at more possessions and recovering basketball, just, just those effort plays alone because, one, it gives you more possessions, but at the same time, there's energy that your teammates feed off of, that your coaches feed off of, and it sets an expectation for guys subbing into the game as well. You saw the shot of the Uruguay bench players basically putting ice on their necks, the cold water bottles. It is a sauna in this gym right now. Expect a lot of players to sub in and out of the lineup quickly. This is interesting backcourt now for Uruguay as they have Rodriguez and Dubal. There are two youngsters on the floor. Counted in the foul for Ibagwin. Good job there. Just get to see him fighting undersized. In the defense on his high side, got the position he wanted and just body up at the rim. Again here, contact right up into it. But he did his work early, right, and created space. Again, had the defense on his high side, created the angle for the, and gave the passing lane and allowed himself to get room for that finish. Andres Ibarraguin. 26 years old, played second division Spain for C.B. Pratt. Averaged 10 and 5 this past season. Pretty efficient too. Shot 69% from the floor, Javon. Yeah, you, you shoot you shoot 60% from the floor. You're making you're making baskets at a high rate. You also know your role. You know your area. You're not stepping out in the deep end of the pool. And that's, that's the key, right, especially on any team, is understanding your role, right? There's going to be one or two guys that have the freedom to take the shots at any point. But if you can own and accept the role, you can carve out a niche for yourself on any team and be productive. Mendoza picked up the foul there, and you saw he had to be consoled on his way to the bench. 14 on the clock now for Uruguay to work with. Here's Ubao. Three to shoot for Uba. He'll tee up a three. In and out. Washman saves possession for Uruguay. Good cut there by Osmani. Great rebound, first of all, by Walsh. Defense is sunk in, you know, trying to get the basketball with him, but then a good job of re recovering it. Seeing his teammate cut to the basket, and a great cut, giving him an opportunity, giving him a lane, giving him a pass to finish. Osimani made the good cut on the other end and then picked up the bonehead foul on the defensive end, putting Uruguay in the penalty. Here's a play you talked about. Great screen here. Foul, and that's always the case. A good shot, but you can just see Walsh here. 
Getting the rebound, three defenders around him, keeps the ball alive, and the Somani, a good cut, finishing at the basket. Tensia misses the first free throw. Washman trying to find it. <laughs> I told you it was hot in here, folks. It was hot. His hands were wet. I couldn't tell down there on that rebound. The ball stuck to his hand like glue there between three defenders. Coach Moreno for Columbia might have to swap his shirt out at half. He might sweat through it. Pressure shown by Columbia. New foul. Calmly walks it across the timeline. 520 remaining in the first half. Rodriguez shows the up fake. We bow. We'll tee up a three. Indeed. The passion and emotion between Ubal and Rodriguez, 19 and 23. The youngsters showing out now for Uruguay. And smart basketball by the youngsters, right? Drive, kick, out, open shot, out of the horn set there. And Ubal again, left to right, got himself set, got up into his jumper, really comfortable out there. A three answered on the other end by Brocha. His first three of the afternoon. Rodriguez, Washman with the screen. Rodriguez fires inside the Washman. The extra pass leads to an open three that's no good from Iglesias. And Atencia will push the other way. Pena wide open on this side, all alone, can't make the three. Almost was too open. Walsh, a good job here, just knowing your personnel, knowing your scouting report. Short closeout, forcing Pena to, to shoot that three. And even that, that makes you think. If you're not, you know, a, a really good three-point shooter, and again, the ball attacking. You've seen him hit the three. You've seen him comfortably get to the rack, to the, going to the right. Now you see him going to the left. He just, he just plays the game at his speed. You can't get him out of control. He just believes. Right now, he looks like he believes he's the better, best player on the court. Attacking left, gets the defense, the contact there the two defenders and just gets giving the ball a chance at the rim. You can see why scouts are excited about the potential for the 19-year-old Ubal. Getting a quick water break as he has played a tremendous amount of minutes here <laughs> in this first half. 11 minutes and counting for Augustine Ubal. And you can see guys are, like you mentioned, they're gassed, right? And, you know, in here is warm. And in tournaments like these, winning is also how you take care of your, your body, right? When you get back to the hotel, just hydrating, stretching, rest. Those things are, are, are invaluable. And for youngsters like Ubal, like, you got to take heed from veterans like Bautista and just ask questions, get to know, you know, how you play this game as long as you can, especially if you have a bright future like yourself. Ball splits the free throws. He now has 10 and counting in the game. 350 remaining in the first half. Pena. Atencia. Not an angle there for the entry feed, so he goes cross court to Pena. Good job there by Rodriguez, not biting on the pump fake. Tough shot banked in by Trota. I don't know if he called glass. <laughs> We'll count the two points for him. Five points in counting. He hit the three-pointer a couple of possessions ago. And a tough bank shot there. Rodriguez right to the rim. And, and that's a tough attack, right? Rodriguez got to the rim and could just see extended to the defense. The ball was away from the defense. Laid it off the glass. What a block inside by Ubal. Doing it on both ends of the floor. Rodriguez took a look at the rim, had a notion to fire from way outside. And now he'll dance. Rodriguez showing the handle. Floaters there, can't get it to go. Pena vacuums it in. Val and Rodriguez putting so much pressure on the rim right now for Uruguay. Great finishers, right? And how they're getting there, just using angles to finish. Procha for three, no good. Val says slow it down. I don't know if he wants to really set up a set more so than take a breather as he walks up the floor. 
15 on the shot clock. Esteban Batista will check in at the next whistle. Behind the back pass, Osimani. These three rims in and out. When it's hot like this in a gym, you start to see the legs go a lot quicker than usual. And as a coach, you start to see that. You know that this is a long tournament ahead of you. This is only day one, right? You got to get into your bench. You got to trust your bench. Utilize as many guys as possible to keep guys fresh. Five to shoot for Atencia. Dubal reached and got beat, but he got helped out. His secondary wave. Rodriguez, no look. Dubal finishes off the great transition offense from Uruguay. And Rodriguez, a great job pushing in transition. The no look gets the ball to his right and nice touch pass there. Great ball movement, great touch passes. And again, you can't move as fast as the ball. Good job here, you see it. Pushing, looks right, drops left. Touch pass at Uwald and he's under the rim. Nice finish. These two, these two, you can tell they, they have some chemistry. They played together before. And they enjoy, like watching how they're playing right now. They're enjoying playing with each other, sharing the basketball, identifying matchups, and giving each other opportunities to attack. Timeout on the floor. Let's listen into the Colombian huddle. a look at that last break opportunity and the block by Ubal. We get on both ends of the floor. He's on the bench now to close the half. A minute 30 remaining in the first half. We're okay back into the game. So is Taylor. Referee says a flopping warning there as Taylor cleans up the miss. And Taylor just all over the court, right? Slipped the screen earlier, got himself a mismatch in the post. Kick out, rebound, in position to rebound, and got himself a layup. Rewarded for hard work. Okay, hammers Rodriguez, sends him to the deck. There's coach Urban Magmano. Argentinian leading this. Uruguay squad. There's the flop warning. See the kick out. Makes a play. And again, just fighting. Ball drops into his hands. And he's just in the right places at the right time. Why? Because he's aggressive, following the basketball. He's engaged and just making the right plays. 11 points and counting for Juan Tello. As we take a look at Rodriguez, towing the line and knocks down his first free throw. Give him six and counting. Joaquin Rodriguez, 23 years old. Playing in the Argentinian League, the BCLA for Obras. Average 15 points, four rebounds, and four dimes in BCL play. And the lights are on, he shines bright. Here's Taylor, wide open for three. Can't get it to go. Batista vacuums it in. And Rodriguez throws his fist up to run set. Roque all over him. The defense by Roque, and it's thrown <laughs> away by Rodriguez. Ooh, he's, he's a magician with that ball. He's seen that play developing before Bautista even realized that he was open. A little, maybe a little too much on it, a little too flashy, but again, just that, that, the ability to see the court. Roque uses the Echenique screen. Good pass to the corner. Can't pay it off with the three. Parodi back into the game. 
Rodriguez goes two for one. Can't hit on the three-point attempt and fast break opportunity. It's Roque right to the rim. Good body control to finish that one. Now, if you're Uruguay, you're, you're playing this clock for that last shot. Might look for Rodriguez, who has had the hot hand. Five to shoot. Is Parodi left alone for three? Can't get it to go. And that's how we'll end the first half. Well, great action here in Brazil to open the 2022 America Cup. Uruguay 40, Colombia 33, as we head to the halftime break. Take a look at some of the stats here from the first half. Uruguay, six three-pointers shooting 43% from three. That's really been the difference, Javon. It has, and, and on the other side, Colombia shooting 17%, right? And to your point, you know, Uruguay has just done a good job. Ten assists already today, just moving the basketball, and it's been the U-ball, and, and Rodriguez show um, just finding each other and, and getting their guys involved and making the right plays, making the right reads. Ubala and Rodriguez combined for 19 first-half points. We take a look at some of the best plays from the first half. We'll leave you with the highlights and be back with more second half action here from Recife, Brazil. You're watching continuing coverage of the 2022 America Cup. Uruguay 40, Colombia 34. Launching the three, no good. Maka, the putback dunk! Wow, did he time that perfect.
three-on-one opportunity. Marshall leading the break. Hearn can't finish. Mumford follows for the dunk. Four guys running the floor. Full speed for USA. He wraps up the rebound, misses it. Gregory Vargas tries to shoot, can't do it. Ooh, John Cox get it off from three-point range. Great basket by John Cox. Unbelievable. Really unbelievable. Solano through the paint. Solano. Turnover. Ranger. Lays it off. Vinny Pato to the basket. What a block by Solano. Good recovery that time by Solano. Hands it up to Garino, Garino with Gutierrez. Also on the screen, hands it inside to Garino, Lucino, great job. Great foul pass by Villarreal to Walter Hart. Hart keeps going on, keeps going, takes off. Three point shot from Marlon. Way downtown and he gets it in. Walter Hart is something else. We have been two very good point guards in this one. Nice. Double double. 53-50. There he is going for the basket. He usually just does his work on the block, that time in the page. It's not crunch time yet, but you still gotta get some scores here. Perez the open jumper. We haven't seen him miss too many of those. Now I know that the other end. Oh, he goes up and scuffs it over the red zone
All right, welcome back to Recife Brazil and the 2022 FIBA America. Game one of match day one. Colombia taking on Uruguay. That man right there, Javon, has been incredible. Carl and Gage, Javon Shepard on the call. Thanks for joining us wherever you are, however you're doing so. And if you're, if you're Colombia, Carlin, you got to come out and say, look, that kid there, Ubal, he's not going to have the impact that he's had on, in this first half, right? Him and Rodriguez. Rodriguez hasn't scored as much, seven points, but it's his imprint on the game, four assists, just controlling, moving the basketball. They're the ones, as young as they are, they're the ones that are out there and just have that presence about them, that intimidation factor right now, that engagement that you're seeing. Courtside 1891 streams, schedules, and scores. That is your ticket for the America Cup, for Eurobasket that is also going on over in Europe. And the FIBA Women's World Cup, which will be happening in Australia in a couple of weeks. Scan the QR code and download the app. Courtside 1891. Uruguay will start the second half on defense, possession arrow pointing in the direction of Colombia. Colombia in the dark blue uniforms, Uruguay in the baby blue. In this second half as well, you want to see Shanique come out and, and, and have a presence, impose himself a bit early on and establish something down low. Third quarter underway here in Recife, Brazil. 2022. FIBA America Cup, Carlin Gay alongside Javon Shepard. Colombia on the basketball now, down seven. Roque, number seven for three, indeed. Great start to the second half. Great start there, and you know, touching the post, and Janique setting that screen on the weak side, and a great kick out by Tello, getting that three up. Rodriguez, the handoff, Batista to Parodi. He's always a threat from deep. Parodi now drives, Batista, great catch. Rodriguez relocates, jab step, five to shoot now. He checks the clock, deep three, Rodriguez. Left it way short. And Taylor will push the other way. Taylor in the lane. A couple ball fakes, got it poked out of his hands. Got to get on the floor for it, he does. It saves possession for Colombia. Roque drove inside, couldn't get a shot off, but got possession back. Five to shoot now for Colombia. Atencia deep three, no good. Offensive rebound, and one. Ibarguin will go to the line for one more. And, and that's a great makeup by him, and I thought that offensive possession, you know, it started out a little too fast. And here you see, you know, an early shot. You just ran a play and ran and trusted your offense and got a good play out of it. Fortunately here, you get an offensive rebound and a makeup and one basket. Come down. If you're Columbia, come down, run your offense, trust your offense, get guys touches, and get a you know a nice fluid shot like you did the first play out of the half. Well, Coach Moreno brought Ibarguin off the bench in the first half and decides to start the second half with him. And you see why, bringing the energy, pounding the offensive board. It's a one-point game now. Rodriguez, no-look feed. Batista down low on Echenique. Cross-court pass, Iglesias for three, left it short, and Roque will push Colombia with an opportunity to take the lead here. Ibarguin now battles. Atencia for three, way off. And Batista grabs that out of the air. Iglesias inside, Batista wants it, now feeling it. Batista taking his time on the block, kicks it out, deep three, no good. And Echenique with a flat-footed rebound. Wanted to see more from Jaime Echenique. Didn't see much from him in the first half. It was supposed to be a battle between him and Batista. He was kind of quiet for Colombia. Taylor, in and out crossover. Lost control of it. Kept possession. Roque on the drive. Echenique, the floater is there. Asking you, sir, I will see. And, and you asked for it, right? So you're going to get a bit more now. Hopefully, we're going to see a bit more from him. Good drop-off. And, you know, hasn't showed much in this game yet, but again, that play there showed you some touch, right? Caught it in the paint there, and nice touch to make that finish. Columbia started this second half down seven. They're up one now. It's 7-13 to play in the third. Parodi, rhythm dribble and floats it home. Made it look easy. 
gives Uruguay the lead once again. Eight points and counting for Parodi. His previous six came from the land beyond. See the points in the paint there. Colombia winning that battle, plus four. Roque, he battled with that pass a little too far for him, and it goes out of bounds. The coach, Ruban Magnano. Argentinian coaching this Uruguay squad. They've trusted him to take this program to the next level. The team kind of feeds and believes in what he's been able to bring to the table as Rodriguez tees up a three. He's trying to guide that in with his body. And Roque now, watched by Rodriguez. Strong screen there by Echenique. Trying to feed it for Ibarguen. Taylor. Crossover. Hit the foot of Roas. Atencia. Can't get it to go on a layup attempt. Fresh shot clock for Colombia. Atencia will try to try the three instead. No good. Taylor crashing the glass. It's Enike right at the rim. Couldn't get it to go. And Batista swinging elbows clears. Rodriguez turns, spins, good pass inside. Oh, what a rejection by Ibarguin. Reaching across Batista's body with his left hand to say no. And how well has he played in his minutes, right, bringing energy. And you can just see here the, the attack, good read by Rodriguez going baseline. Like you mentioned, up and meets Batista at the rim, blocks him. Batista there steps on the line. Or Echenico, excuse me, steps on the line, out of bounds. 14 on the clock to start the possession for Uruguay. Parodi for three. Too strong. And Echenique battles his own teammate to clear. We asked for effort, probably not that type of effort. <laughs> but he wants battle that time. Here's Roque. Taylor comes across the screen, using his body, fading away. One footed jump shot, no good. Echenique with another offensive rebound. And he has arrived and, here and, in the second half. And this is what you wanted, right? Again, he's getting offensive rebound in position, comes up with the basketball, turns over that left shoulder, and nice touch, nice finish. Want, want to see more of that. If Columbia's going to have, have a chance in this game, it's got to start with him. Echenique now with six points, nine rebounds. Batista double teamed. Washman was fouled underneath. It's on the floor. And that will reset the shot clock back to 14. Kind of frustrates you as a fan watching Echenique play as we see him here with the sky hook because the effort wasn't there in the first. It's coming now in the third. But as soon as you see it, you understand why he's such a big talent, right? Has a size, has a skill, has a footwork. If you're if you're a coach, it can frustrate you, absolutely. And if you're a teammate, it can frustrate you because he has the ability to dominate a game, offensively and defensively. Count the bucket and the foul. Batista. Drawing the foul of Echenique, you decide at home, block charge, but toughest call. You know what, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him points for effort here, right? Just because you want to see more of it, want to see more of a presence. Got the offensive foul here, and that's just Bautista being smart, being savvy, and just stepping over that high foot and catching him by surprise there. So Bautista will toe the line for one free throw. Not the greatest of free throw shooters, so this should be an adventure. Six points, five rebounds, and one dime for the birthday boy turning 39 years of age today. Hands a free throw and gives Uruguay a two point lead. Telo. Ibargo. Atencia. Tend to shoot. Tensia. They want to go inside to Ibarguen. They float it over to the top. And Chenique kicks it out. Roque took too long. Should have took the first attempt. Wanted a rhythm dribble and paid the price with the shot clock violation. And a broken play, right? You lose two or three seconds, it can be costly. Sense a little bit of a momentum shift and 
and Coach Ravon Magnano subs in his spark plug off the bench as Augustine Ubal on the ball now for Uruguay was terrific in the first half. 12 first half points. Definitely the star of the game so far. And you can see the, the ball pressure, right? The emphasis there. Roque doing a good job of just getting up into him. Parodi, just a pro move there, getting his man in the air and drawing the foul. If that's on Echenique, that's his third. It is. And you just know it, right? You're coming out of the half. You know you guys, too, got to attack him. That's the emphasis. Good job there, attacking Parodi, attacking him. We haven't seen pro hops like that in a while, right? Gets in there, hops on two. While the, while the contact sees the arm out and just holds the ball strong. But I've been, you know, his size, it's impressive to see how well he gets into the paint, how quick he gets into the paint. And again, a solid base and strong body, the ability and the concentration, you know, to make plays in there through traffic. Luciano Parodi knocks down the first free throw. Three-time Uruguayan League champion is Parodi was your Grand League MVP and Finals MVP in 2016. Played this past season in the German League for Wurzburg. Pretty efficient, shooting 45% from the field, 42 from three, averaging eight and five in the German BBL. His team now up three. Here in the third quarter, as Atencia falling away drills the midi. You love to see when guys get to their spot, you know, rise up controlled. And you can just see their fades while he's in the air to create that space into his jumper. Seven points and counting now for Atencia. Roque reaching in on Ubal. So you said the ball pressure definitely picked up for Colombia, especially when Ubal's on the rock. They don't want him to have any airspace. Nice there, good job, solid base like you mentioned. You can just see concentration on the rim while he's phasing, fading away. Great elevation on it, great rotation on the shot. Wow, great hesitation to find some space and using the window. It makes such a difference when you have wingspan like he does. Great hesitation, but when he gets into the paint, you know, and extends, it's just himself and the basket at that point. Atencia, inside. H&EK, the jump hook is short. Washman clears. Ubal crossing over now. Has a bigger tailor on him. Goes inside to Batista. H&EK playing with three fouls, has to be careful. Batista knows that and wants to attack him. Ubal for three. Indeed! Everything in his bag on display tonight. He's showing everything, the inside, the outside game, out there having fun, smiling while he's doing it, and you can just see there's a high level of compete to him. Echenique drives inside, count it, and the foul. And, and Echenique feasting inside. Some emotion from him, right? Like, that's a special part there. Bring out that bring out that dog in him. Bring out that fierceness. Nice pass by Tensia and just attacking Batista, not afraid of the size. You can just see him. That's the emotion you're talking about, and then you know, just sizing up, and Ubal just showing everything, right? Every part of his game, outside, inside, the comfort level, you know, the, the, the fact that he's playing at his own pace. And keep in mind, these are grown men that he's playing against. You mentioned the ball pressure to start this third quarter, trying to speed him up. And you said something very important, playing at his own pace. He hasn't been flustered at all. Just 19 years old on this grand stage here at the America. And that's something you can't teach, right? That's the, your trainers, coaches. That's something you either have or you don't, and it innately he does. He can handle the basketball, and it, it's, it's, it's confidence, right? He just believes in his ability and what he's going to do, and no one's going to steer him off track. A little mock pressure there by Colombia. Your ball hands it, handles it no problem. Simani, Batista, Ubal inside. That's the first forced shot from Ubal. Columbia down three, under two to play here in the third quarter. Roque, Taylor, Midi, indeed. Good job by Roque again, just using the ball screen, and Ubal was still trailing. 
Tello out on, the, on that weak side there, just spacing the floor. A great kick out, great shot. Osimani using the Batista screen. Rubal, it's fired into Batista. They clear the side for him. Bodies banging and stolen away. Good hands there by Roque. Roque, high dribble inside. Can't get it to go over Rubal. That's good defense by the youngster. Not fouling, just going straight up. And then gets fouled as he tries to turn the other way. And the crowd getting into this one now. See here, may have sold us a bit, right? As a young, <laughs> young guy. But at the same time, you can just see the, the experience that he has in him, the savvy rather that he has, just embellishing that call a bit and forcing, forcing the whistle of the ref. And and Roque, at the same time, he may have, he may have a, you know, a, an account with 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 the refs because he had made that attack there and probably got, you know, bumped a bit. But Ubal just coming up with it and making the smart play, the, the savvy play. A smart play because he now toes the line with two free throws as he knocks down the first. Colombia now in the penalty with a minute 14 remaining here in the third period. And every every player loves to get to the free throw line, right? Because uh, you know we all play this game, we all want to score, so that's an, that's an opportunity now to just put two free ones on. Although he splits this one here. Not everyone wants to make the free throw line. There's some players out there that get a little shaky, my man. Man, well, <laughs> I, I wanted to score, I'll tell you that much. Any opportunity. Taylor <laughs> driving, lost control of the basketball. And Roas got a hand to it. Seven on the shot clock will stay here. I'm sure at some point, you know, during this tournament, we'll see, you know, a, a technical or a sportsmanlike foul call, rather. And two guys are going to meet at the free throw line trying to shoot the free throw. <laughs> There'll be some going on the other end of the floor, trying to stay as far <laughs> out of the way for a free throw line as possible. Shot clock violation as Roas could not get it off in time. Good defense there by Washman. Forty-seven seconds remaining here in the third period. Uruguay leading by two. They started this period leading by seven. Colombia. Showing a bit of spark coming out of the halftime break. Bautista on the elbow. Ubal takes the double team. Someone's open. It's Ubal for three. He's feeling it. Hey, the kid is in his bag. Let's just say that. He's, he, he's got it. He's all right. He's going to be all right. And it's not a Ziploc bag either. <laughs> Atencia, step back. That's nasty. Can't finish it though. Rubal gets hammered. And guess what? It's going back to the line with three seconds remaining in this quarter. You see it here, just tease it up. Look at the rotation. Look at the, 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 the height of the basketball. You just trotting back and anytime a player's trotting back like that they, they feel good about themselves you see Miami getting coached up by coach Mike Nano. I'm sure he's telling him just find number eight and it's tough right because at this point he's showing you everything you run him off at the three-point line, he's gonna get into the mid-range and show you what he has there. You know, you close out short on him, he's gonna he's gonna shoot the three ball. At this point, you can't let him touch the rock, right? You gotta do your, your work early. And the best defense is not allowing him ha to have the ball in his possession because not only can he score, but he can he, he can create for others. Twenty-two points. In 19 minutes off the bench for Agustin Ubal. Three seconds here for Colombia to get a look off. It's Atencia, and he gets fouled by Osimani. I don't understand that one. I believe they had, they had a foul to give there. They did, but why give it up? Fouls are so precious sometimes. Mind you, Osimani is not in any type of foul trouble, but Atencia. Having that look from that far out. 
kind of read the scouting report and let him take that. We'll add some time back on the clock because it's showing triple zeros. Point five goes back on the clock for Colombia to work with. Point five is showing on the big screen here in the arena, but over the shot clock, it's still showing triple zero. And the officials sorting that out. Atencia from deep. Can't get it to go, and that's how we'll end the third quarter. Well, it's been the Augustine Ubal show. He's putting on for Uruguay 22 points at game high. And his team leads 56-50 over Colombia. Stats from the first three quarters of play. Uruguay coming back down to earth after shooting the lights out from three-point range early. And here's some of the best plays from the third period. It's been 30 exciting minutes so far. And if you want to see more FIBA basketball action, a reminder, scan that QR code that's on your screen right now for courtside 1891 stream schedule scores and more from the 2022 America, Eurobasket, and in a couple of weeks, the FIBA Women's World Cup. Let's listen in to the Columbia Huddle. As we get set for the final 10 minutes of the game, the story has been Augustine Ubal leading the way, the 19-year-old with 22 points off the bench in 19 minutes for Uruguay. He's on the rock right now. Colombia has to find a way to stop him, and he draws another foul. Montano now picking up the foul, just seconds into the fourth quarter. So it's it's fair to say that he's had himself a game to this point, right? And now it's fourth quarter. You know, that's a complete another game. This is it's winning time now, up six, right? And, and obviously, Colombia's made some adjustments to be more aggressive with him, and that's they're gonna, there's going to be a concerted effort this fourth quarter, you know, to slow him down, right? How is he going to respond as a young guy? Played well, but now it's time to turn that switch and win a game. Goodbye. Tanyo really in his pocket. Osimani. Washman on the pick and pop. Can't get it to go. Telo clears and Roque will push. Echenique battling for position. Spending a lot of time in the key. Officials allowed it. Echenique now waiting for a cutter. Taylor will tee up a three. Hand in his face, no good. And Roas comes down with the flat-footed rebound. Folks, you see how hot it is in this gym. Coach Moreno sweating through his shirt. Not because he's nervous, because it's that hot in here in Recife. Another foul on the ball, and Ubal is really causing a problem now. He is, and if you watch how he moves right out of that horns action, gives up the basketball, just how he cuts. Moving, shifting, and moving one day, really one way, really keeping the defense off balance. Not just when he's on the ball, but off the ball as well. He's, he's very impactful, very aggressive. Rebound in the lane. The ball movement from Uruguay. Osimani pays it off with a triple. 
Oh, Simani there, you, you know, the beneficiary, drive, kick, extra pass, rhythm shot, knocks it down. Nine point lead for Uruguay. Taylor spins in the lane, falling away, can't get it to go. Rebound by Ubal. Iglesias, Washman, not even gonna look at the rim from out there. Osimani with 14 to shoot. Fell down and lost possession of the ball. Echenique on the runway, foul, count it! Echenique will go to the line for one more. I mean, he had no choice but to make that one because you have Atencia in front of you, didn't give it up, but just trusted himself, attacking, makes the basket. You can see it here, pushing it, showing his skill, Gets the defense on his high side, finishes at the rim. Nice finish again, seeing some emotion. Game's on the line, this is what you want from him. Screaming and one on that finish. And an important shot because it felt as though momentum might have been slipping away from Colombia. Lead back down to six now. The three point play completed by Jaime Echenique. Osimani. Ubal, nice feed. Washman put it down on the deck. Had to kick it back out. Roas attacks. And we got an offensive foul. Great read by Janika there. Just setting up outside the dotted line there. Just keeping his feet set solid. Sees that offensive is penetrating out of control. Great two back-to-back -back plays for him. And one on one end. And then getting the offensive foul. Keeping his team in this game. Emotion for Uruguay off that last triple six point game. 8 0 2 remaining in the fourth quarter. We got a timeout on the floor. Folks, you can scan that QR code for live stats and so much more from the 2022 FIBA America here in Brazil. This is just the first game of four today. Coming up next, we have Team USA taking on Mexico. A little later on, Brazil, the host nation, taking on Canada. And Venezuela and Panama will close the night. But it has been the Augustine Ubal Show. So you take a look at some of his best work this evening. Showing you everything, inside, outside, that layup early, just showing you. You see how high he got it off the glass, and he made it look easy, but that's just touch, that's feel. And then again, showing that perimeter game. 22 points, four rebounds, one assist for Augustine Uba. Taylor out of the timeout for Colombia. Taylor was back to the basket. They clear the space. Good hands there by Iglesias. Good job by Uruguay, shrinking the floor there. Just seeing three hands, three defenders in front of him coming up with the basketball. Uba. Oh, what a move. The feed, Washman. Needed to go up with it straight away. A kick out. You bow for three. Can't get it to go. Echenique touched the rim on that. Got away with something. Tensia for three. Too strong. Ball falls right back to him. Roque inside. Echenique goes to work with 10 on the clock. Echenique pump fake. And the foul is called. It's either going to be a foul or a travel. Referee blows for the foul. Slightly delayed. I thought it may, may have been travel there, but again, Echenique, good job. And now the second half has been the one imposing himself, getting it low, little shot fake there, and defense displaces him. So gets that foul call, gets himself not only an opportunity for two points here, but stops the clock, allows them, Columbia, to get back in defensive position. 
13 points and counting for Jaime Echenique. He's one rebound away from a double-double. And imagine that, right? As quiet as he started out, he's flirting with the double-double, right? So you always want more. You're always going to expect more of him because he has that ability to just be a double-double machine. He's going to have to carry this Colombian squad here in Brazil. A lot depending on how he plays. He also probably earn himself a little bit more cheese on his Whopper. He's <laughs> able to play well here. Roque has got away with a carry there. Otelo and Echenique were trying to post in the same spot. Echenique wins out and follows up with a jump hook. And he's feeling it. And they, he wants to get over that left shoulder to finish that right hand there. Again, initiating the contact. Gets a clear turn and just nice finish, nice touch. You can just tell by how the ball rolled off the rim so softly. Columbia fighting back again. Lead back down to three. Great block by Montano. Swatting Ubao's attempt. Roque drives. Montano shows the up fake. Runs into Roque. Spacing an issue now for Colombia on this possession. Atencia. They want it on a Chenique. And he wants it. Pass goes right through his hands. But... Jenna Jordan Renault from the U.S. blows for a foul. It's on the floor. It is the third team foul for Uruguay. And Echenico, like you mentioned, you can see a block here. Montanero, that, that, that's his sole responsibility right now is to be out there and be, you know, like white on rice with Ubal. He's, he's done a good job this, this fourth quarter here. And to your point, a little a little extra cheese on your Whopper. And Echenico has been, done a good job just being aggressive. There you picked up a foul here, but it was because of his presence, his call just being big for the basketball. Atencia for three. No good. Echenique tried to tap it back in. Couldn't get the follow. Ball on the bench now as Parodi back into the game for Uruguay. Batista now on the floor, his first touch after sitting for a while. We haven't seen Rodriguez here much in the second half. Batista on the follow, and then it squirted right out of his hands, and Echenique protecting the rim. And that ball popped right out of Bautista's hands. And you talk about the heat in here. And guys, you're looking at the jerseys and sticking to them. And I remember this firsthand. Is that sometimes those, those balls, they get wet. And you think you have a good grip on them. It just flies out. So it's not just the hydration. You've got to really concentrate, especially in that fourth quarter, to really maximize each possession while these balls get wet as well. So Echenique sits down. Let's see how long that lasts for. Roque attacks the rim, can't get the layup. And Parodi says, let's run. Luciano Parodi. Offensive foul. Esteban Batista on the moving pick. And again, that was in there and just sticking his nose in there, right? Being that defensive presence. Colombia with another chance to chip away at this lead. They can tie with the three on this possession. It's Roque. They're looking for Atencia on the curl. They find him. Now he'll drive. Atencia feeds inside. Montano can't get it to go. Follows his own. Not pretty, but it's effective. Not pretty, but you got to love it for him, right? Out here, just being that defensive stopper, getting himself an opportunity for some offense, offensive rebounding, just putting it back. One point game. Parodi bumped by Atencia. And that's the third team foul here in the fourth period. And we have mentioned it earlier, right? Just guys having roles. And Montano, you're, you're seeing it. Probably not the most skilled guy out there, probably not the most talented guy, but has carved himself some minutes tonight just being that defensive stopper, that defensive go-to guy for, for his team. Parodi tried to feed it inside to Batista. Got it back on the ricochet. Can't get it to go. Colombia with an opportunity to take the lead. Roque inside, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line as Uruguay in the penalty. And Roque, he's been so fast. right? When he gets that ball, kicks it into that second gear like you see here, it's tough for defense to recover and stay in front of, in front of him. Echenique with the short rest back into the game. And Montano gets a good hand from his bench. 
congratulating him for the effort that he brought to the table. Now you can see the coach right there just called him. He went to the back of the bench. The coach called him right back up to congratulate him. But tell him to sit right here because your, your breather is going to be short. <laughs> You're going right back into this game. There's a purpose for you. Gets a little bit more time to grab a breather as there is a timeout on the floor. 4-14 remaining in a one-point game. We're already off to a great start here at the America in Brazil. Echenique with a double-double, 15 and 10, has come alive in this second half. And provided the spark that Colombia has needed. And here's some of his work here this afternoon, Javon. A nice touch, dropping it down. You can just see it. a lot of his baskets. You can just see how soft his touch is. And again, the emotion there, the aggression, getting it above the rim, off the glass, putting it on the rim. And, and now, you know, what I like is he's out here and leading his team, right? Communicating with guys, huddling up and just telling them what you what, what he needs from them, what we need from them, you know, to come out with a victory in this game. And as slow as he started, double double, he he has a presence, right? You, you can feel him out there now. And again, you can just see even from the impact he's had offensively, he's bringing on a defensive side as well. I wonder if the heat got to him early on. And now that he has his second win, you see a different energy with him, even in his face. Looks excited, looks aggressive out there. As Roque ties the game with that free throw. Looking to take the lead for Colombia. The crowd had been waiting to erupt for that lead change for quite some time as Colombia now with a one point lead, 4 7 remaining in the fourth period. Parodi gets it back with 10 to shoot. Parodi. And he's fouled by Atencia. That's the fourth team foul for Colombia. And you look at Atencia there and looking at the ref like, are you kidding me? But you can see the hook there. And I don't know any player that's actually put up their hand and said, you know what? Yes, that, that foul was on me. So I couldn't expect any better from him there. Clock did not start on time as Rodriguez drilled the three after the whistle. We had not seen Rodriguez for quite some time here in this game. Uruguay needing that man's energy. Played terrific alongside Ubal in the second quarter and then sat pretty much the whole second half. He's in the backcourt with Parodi now. Parodi. Looking for help. Iglesias. Tees up the three. No good. Roque all alone to vacuum it in. Roque indeed at the top of the key drills it. And that, that's just too easy, right? Gets in the ball screen action. There's no big to step up and help. That defense is in the paint. Roque, a good job just rising up, getting to his spot, into his jump shot. Largest lead of the game for Colombia. Rodriguez looking to dance on Roque. Rodriguez gonna have to put it up. Parodi didn't get it off in time. Shot clock violation. Colombia tightening the screws on defense now. And you gotta give credit to Roque, right? He's come out and at the beginning of the half, again, it was Ubal at the time, but just setting the tone defensively, getting up into the offense, getting up under them and just applying pressure being like invigorating his team, giving them that energy. Colombia battled back from being down by as many as nine points. They now have their largest lead at three, looking to extend it. Taylor 
Aggressive move to the 10. That's your knee, K. On the finish. Big man to big man, right? Tello may have gotten away with a hook there. Gets to the, to the, the teeth of the defense, and it's dropped down to the big man. And Chinique, again, getting above the rim. And you can just see how soft, how nice the touch is with the finish here. And then the emotion at the end of it. 64-59, Columbia coming all the way back to take the lead late in the fourth. Timeout on the floor. Let's listen in to the Uruguay huddle. Energy in this gym has been appropriate all afternoon as both these teams leaving it all out on the floor. And this is only the first game. This is just the first game, right? It's, it's electric. <laughs> it's shocking me because in my experiences, you you know, those first couple of games, those early games, were pretty dead. Were pretty dead and would pick up over time, especially when the host team played, which is later tonight. But again, electrifying and, and this guy, speaking of, of electrifying, Roke, again, ball screen there. Reading the defense, pops up into his jump shot. Nobody inside and just knocks it down. Tello kick out again, Roque making himself present, finding the basketball and open threes, making big plays. Largest deficit for Uruguay as they come out of the timeout. Parodi blocked by Echenique and he kept it in bounds. Hey, you wanted to see more, right? This is, he, he's showing it to you. He's showing it to you now. See if they go to him on the block. He's going to want it. Calls for it and gets it. Baptista on defense. Echenique turns, fires, no good. Telo touched it. No. It banked off of the neck of Iglesias. And it will stay here with 14 on the clock for Colombia to work with as we see Echenique saying, uh uh. And just using that wingspan there. Doesn't have to close out too hard, but gets a tip on the basketball and comes up with it. Roque. Roque drives on Parodi. Okay. Hey, it's winning time. Again, gets to that spot, that mid-range. Bumps the defense off, creates that space up to his jumper. Nice, smooth, and fluid. Showing great body control, 14 and counting for Roque. He's ball back into the game. Rodriguez, they go inside to Batista. And Chinique playing with three fouls. Parodi thought about it. Now he might have to take it with three on the shot clock. Parodi. go the other way. And Colombia's defense has just, it's tightened up. It's become stifling and just more intentional, right? You get a, you get a touch into the post of Batista and Tello shrinking the floor, forcing him to get the ball out of his hands and then everybody in position to recover. We talk about Colombia's defense tightening up. Uruguay has scored three points in this quarter. We're going to get more here as Parodi on the open floor. Missed the layup. Ibagwin with the hustle play and affected the Parodi layup. Uruguay stuck on three in this quarter as Atencia now trying to kill some clock. Roque, he's been the man in this fourth. Ibagwin. Echenique blocked by Batista. And Ubal has it. Ubal down the lane. Count it, and a foul. That's a bad man, folks. Bad, bad, bad man. And again, you hope it's not too little too late, but the fight, the grit, right? And fighting grit, you've also seen from Colombia. And a number of players for them have stepped up. Catch 
cashes in on the free throw. Now time to play some defense with 48 seconds left. Four-point game. Do you foul in this situation as we see a timeout on the floor? You play through. You play through a bit, run the clock, and, you know, it's a four-point game. Um, for one possession, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting my defense to get a stop, get out and get a basket. And that was the basket that Uruguay needed. That youngster being incredible tonight. Timeout, Uruguay. Coach Magnano in the huddle. Let's listen in. out with 48 seconds left in the game. You know you're going to get the ball back if you're able to clear. Yeah, you're, not, you're not in a position right now where you're, you're forced, where your back's against the wall and necessarily need to foul, right? You come up with a big stop right now, a big play, big rebound, or a big steal. You know, you're out in transition. You put two more on the board. Colombia goes with Tensia, Roque, Telo, Echenique, and Magnano. Potential turnover in the backcourt. Do they get it over half? That's eight seconds. Here's the defensive stop that Uruguay needed. They stand in Brazil. As Uruguay with an opportunity now to chip away at this lead. 38 seconds to play in the game. Boy, all the games are going to be like this. We're in for a wild ride over the next 10 days, my friend. Largest lead of the game was 9 for Uruguay. Columbia battled back. We've had seven lead changes. A 16-0 run from Columbia here in this quarter is the reason why they hold a four-point lead. Uruguay has only scored six points in this quarter as Columbia has tightened up. And some key substitutions now for Uruguay. Diego Pena into the game. Has not played much. Actually, this is his first couple of seconds coming off the bench cold. Number 52, Baby Blue. It's Coach Magnano trying to move the chess pieces on the board. Echenique will sit. 40 seconds remaining. Ubal. Roque all over him. Ubal down the lane. Kicked it out. Parodi for three. Can't get it to go. Rebound inside by Roque. Where's the foul from Uruguay? There it is. Colombia calling for an unsportsmanlike, as that was not a play on the basketball. And Chinique finding some humor in it all. As Pena with the bear hug on Taylor. And Colombia got away with a break there because Ubal got himself into the paint. He just. He lost control of it at the last second there and had to, you know, just get a hand on it and tip it out. But important free throws for Taylor. Calmly knocks down the first. Two for two from the line. Rodriguez for three, way off. Iglesias touched it last, and Colombia now starting to smell victory. 18 to play. Taylor will cross half court. He 
he's fouled just before he tried to turn it over. I don't know what he was thinking on that pass. <laughs> and what, what, a, what a difference of a team Columbia has been in this, in this second half, right? And we talk about a number of guys that stepped up. Obviously, the Janike and, and, and Tello are going to get most of the attention and the praise and Roque. But that but man right there, Montano. Montano and Ibakwin. Like they've come out and, and you talk about energy, right, and, and permeating throughout your team. Those two have been the one, that, the, the catalyst there, that second half and just coming out and making the key stops that they need, that their team needed. Energy plays that their team needed, offensive rebounds that their team needed. So does it, is it going to show up in the stat sheet? No. But if you go back in that locker room, those are the two guys that you got to look. Each, you know, all your team has got to look in the face and say that they won us this game or putting us, put us, it's still 12 seconds left, put us in a position to win this game. Well, the Sinu Bob knocks down the free throw. Although he may not come away with the victory, he put on a show this evening with 26 points looking for number 27 here he gets it 12 seconds remaining another timeout he put Still on time. say he put on a show i'm gonna say he put on an exhibit <laughs> it was a work of art 70 to 64 columbia in front as we head to Columbia Huddle and listen in to Coach Mereno. Fans were treated to an incredible game back and forth between two South American teams. And it's only the first game of the day. Coming up next, we have the U.S. taking on Mexico. Canada and Brazil will follow, and later on this evening, local time, Venezuela and Panama. But still 12 seconds to go in this one as Colombia will inbound up 70 to 64. Uruguay looking to complete the comeback win. Ball's not even in play yet, and they're running their set. Stripped out of his hands. Ubao gets to the floor. Parodi for three. No good. They needed that. Three seconds remains in hand on head for that youngster. He has left it all out on the floor. Hey, you know what's impressive about him? You look at his numbers, and obviously he's shown a lot offensively, but he, he's just out there competing, right, and diving on the floor right now. That's your best player, and he's diving on the floor, right? So he's set the tone for everybody to compete at the level that he is. And I'm, 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 I've been impressed with him, right? As young as he is, 19 years old, coming out and again playing at his own pace can't speed him up can't slow him down but he's, he's one of the first guys to dive on the floor coach Pagano calling off the hounds here as Columbia comes away with a 70 to 64 victory over Uruguay in the first game of match day one the FIBA America Cup Brazil 2022. Seven lead changes. What a thriller. Colombia 70, Uruguay 64. Well, 
Mario Roque has a purple heart carved into his haircut. Colombia showed all heart coming back from down as many as nine. A 16-0 run in the fourth quarter. And they take victory number one here at the America Cup. Smiling faces all around. There's the purple heart in Roque's head. And this, is, this is a gutsy win, right? You see how the team came out that first half. And what I was impressed with, they came out the second half and, and there was a response, right? There was a response being punched in the face early. Came out. There you see Eshinikwe stepped up the second half here. Leader of his team showed some aggression, so, showed some emotion. And, you know, these guys willed this team to a victory. But again, it's that response from being down early, being, you know, pretty much knocked out early and, and, and almost looked deflated and came back and got the job done. See the final stats here in this game. Colombia not able to find the range, only three of 20 from three-point range. But second chance points proved to be the difference, plus 15 on the backboard. And there's your top scores. And Chinique and Taylor leading the way with 17 apiece. But it was Roque in winning time with 14 big points. And Coach Guillermo Moreno, who was sweating right through his shirt, <laughs> earned it. And those fans will go home happy they were supporting Colombia to make the dramatic comeback here in game number one in Brazil. And, and great energy. Here's some of the best plays so far from the game. And that man, Roque, as we mentioned, closed the show. Look at Tello again. That spin baseline was able to keep the concentration and his vision kicks it out to Roque. Roque just tees it up and just lets it fly, lets it roll see the second chance opportunities for Colombia that was really the problem that man in the wet t-shirt contest in this basketball <laughs> game and it's Roque dropping it down to Echenique and just that touch there just catching it poised getting it up again penetration paint touch Rodriguez spinning baseline a nice block there and Tello right just Fadeaway shot, another offensive rebound, like you mentioned earlier, second chance points, right? And effort plays right here, taking charges. Roque, another three point shot, teeing it up, nice rotation. Just playing really good team basketball that second half on both ends. And then there that man is. You called him up. That's a bad, bad man. Put it on an exhibit today. Three from perimeter. Echenico again, transition, fast break play there, smart, heady, finishing at the rim. Colombia had 13 offensive rebounds in the game that led to 16 second chance points. They were also able to get out in the open floor. They had 18 fast break points in the game to just seven for Uruguay. And Coach Moreno should be impressed with the effort, at least in the second half. He would love to see that same effort and same energy in that first half. Group A is quite tough. Won't get any easier from here on out for either of these two teams. As Brazil and Canada round out the four teams in Group A. Uruguay's next game comes September 3rd, local time, as they take on Canada. Colombia will play host Brazil on September 3rd. Colombia will go into that game feeling good about the way they closed this one out against Uruguay. Chinique, Tello, and Roque put on a show and were able to close it out with a mammoth fourth quarter. Later on today, Group A action will see Brazil take on Canada. In between that, we will have Mexico and the United States. We'll see you then for that one. For Javon Shepard, I'm Carlin Gay. We'll be back a little later on. U.S. taking on Mexico here from the America in pursuit.